Hi, my name is Fede and this is Eternally Curious. Ever heard stuff like this before? The reality is a lot of climatologists believe that the science is not settled. Global warming is illusory. We're actually going through a period of global cooling. The last 15 years, CO2 has gone up by several points and global temperatures have stayed stable. A article in The Economist in March 2013, and I quote, said temperatures have not really risen over the last 10 years. A month earlier, the BBC News reported that since 1998, there has been an unexplained standstill in the heating of the Earth's atmosphere. This is largely correct, right? Is it correct? Has there been no warming since 1998? I thought climate change was real and it was getting worse. So what's going on? Here's what's happening. These people are wrong. They're either lying, incompetent, or both. Why? A lot of times you see people in debates bringing up the 97% consensus of climate scientists, or the fact that these deniers are paid for by large oil companies to say these things. These are all bad answers, because they don't explain why they're wrong, which leads to statements like this one. All policy should be based on empirical evidence. I've heard consensus, which is not science. I've heard appeals to authority, which is not science. That's true. I think a better approach is to show the evidence. So, no warming since 1998. True or not? Let's have a look. Let's go to NASA's website, download the data, and then get, I don't know, 1998 to 2012. Copy, paste, plot, and... Oh my god, it's true! The temperatures are the same! There's been no change! Everybody's lying! Climate change is a lie! Look, it's a straight line! Except, that's not how you read a graph. First of all, the climate is not determined by the year-to-year -year temperature, but by the overall trend of temperatures over decades or more. That's why climate scientists use five-year averages. Let's see what happens then. Oh, I guess it's going up. But more fundamentally, the question is, where is the trend line going? Is it going up? Is it flat? Is it going down? Let's see. Ah, okay, I guess it's going up then. Okay, but that's just 1998 to 2012. What about 2013, 14, and 15? Ah, okay. But, but uh, what's the big picture? Is it true that since the Industrial Revolution, temperatures have been increasing? Sure they have. Here's another way to look at it. NASA has been so kind to freely share with the rest of us the detailed data on an interactive world map. Let's have a look. Blue areas are cold, red are hot. This is 1880, and that's today. Hmm. Now let's compare 1998 and 2015. 1998, 2015. 1998, 2015. 1998. I wonder what would happen if someone just showed this fucking graph in front of one of these deniers. I can just imagine the scene. That'd be nice to watch. Can I just, I just, I brought the graph, right? I mean, can I just... <laughs> okay, listen, let me, let me just tell you where, where, the, where, the, where the pause is. It, the, the pause that's often quoted, the, there's um, if you take this point here, which is about 1997, I think, and you ignore 2015, 2016, you can choose that point and you can draw a slightly straighter trend line on there. But that, that's a, a misunderstanding. The, the, the question is, does that rise? Yes, Brian, my man, love it. There has been no warming. Uh, yes, there has. Oh, where is the evidence? Here is the evidence. Boom! Now, what do you have to say? Can you go back to the middle of the graph there? Yeah. The, the <clears throat> that graph. Yeah, the peak in the middle? Yep. What year is that? That's about 1941. Yeah, 1930s and 40s were warmer than the current decades. What you, where's that, well, no, what's the no, data source? Well, not exactly. No, no. <laughs> no, they were not. 30s and 40s were warmer than the current decades today. Okay, okay, okay. let's look. This is 1930s, this is 1940s, and this is today. What are you talking about? How does this guy who can't even read the graph they teach in elementary school become a public official who makes laws in a country. Oh, forget it. Let's just continue. What else do you have to say? The other thing that tells me that graph has got something wrong with it is that 1998 was about the same as 2015-16.
Malcolm, just, just one second. Oh, you're no. hearing the interpretation of a, a highly qualified scientist um, and you're just saying, I don't believe it. Is that right? I'm saying, I'm, saying, I'm saying two things. First of all, that the data has been corrupted and we know that the 1930s what do you mean were warmer than today. Yeah. Corrupted? What do you mean corrupted? Been manipulated. And, by and, who? Uh, by NASA. NASA? NASA. Yes. <laughs> The people saying, uh, guys, guys, no, no, see, this is quite no, serious. No, no, Holy shit, it is quite serious. NASA has been corrupting the data? Well, you know what Carl Sagan said, so let's hear it. Steve Goddard, um, he, he has shown the NASA figures, and the, the graph was originally showing that 1930s were warmer than recent decades, and that is correct. And people have recognised that for many, many years. And in the recent years, they have be, they've been reversed so that the 1930s were reduced in temperature and the later periods were inflated in temperature. That's a fact. Now, the Bureau of Meteorology is exactly the same. And Greg Hunt squashed an investigation of the Bureau of Meteorology earlier this year. OK, all right, Greg Hunt. Can I just change well, one thing? NASA. <laughs> now, NASA. Yes. The people that landed men on the moon. I don't you, I, I, I should just ask, actually, you, you believe we landed men on the moon? <laughs> But the point is that the accusation that, that NASA, pretty all the, the, the Australian, the, the Met Office in the UK, everybody is collaborating to manipulate global temperature data. Are you accusing me of saying they're collaborating? Well, they all, they've all manipulated it in the same way and accidentally got to the same answer. Is that NASA, what you're saying? NASA, NASA was led by James Hansen. What about the Met Office activist. in the UK then? Well, this could go around all night. Well, I know it could, yes. It could right. go around all night. No, it doesn't. It was just starting to get interesting. Because this is the crux of the entire climate change debate. Whether it is the 20 years without warming, or the weather has always been changing, or it's the sun, not the SUV, or whatever nonsense people are shouting, this is the main point. In order to refuse to accept the science of climate change, you have to believe that NASA, the Met Office in the UK, NOAA, the American Association for the Advancement Federation of, of Science, Australian Scientific the Royal Society and Technological Museum, Society, the African Academy of European Sciences, Science Foundation, all the greatest universities, research centers, and all the most important academic and scientific institutions that have created all the marvels of technology in modern society, including the device you're watching this video on and the technology that delivers it, they have all conspired to corrupt and manipulate the data. This is what you have to believe to be a climate change denier. Because the data shows, without a doubt, the temperatures are rising, that after controlling for variables, human activity is responsible for the abnormal warming of the planet. Period. It doesn't go on all night. It all boils down to this one simple fact. Quite frankly, I'm also a little tired of keep having to hear this bullshit when we settled the science 20 years ago or more, and yet we keep hearing about it. And the immoral and irresponsible actions of these people are preventing us from taking serious steps towards its resolution. And this is not to say that there is no disagreement whatsoever among scientists. There are legitimate researchers who have proposed different models or who have tinkered with the models. And this is how science progresses and their models are now being tested. That's how we evolve and that's how we make the models and our understanding better. But no serious researchers who study the climate and has peer-reviewed papers in scientific journals is questioning the basic science of climate change. Special interests are so desperate to find credible scientists who will sell their credentials for a few dollars that when Richard Miller, a respected scientist, a professor of physics from the University of Berkeley, said that he was questioning the science of climate change that he wasn't convinced, they immediately jumped on the opportunity. So they gave him a bunch of money to put together a team to finance a study which they hoped would bring down the climate of science change and expose it as a hoax. But then when Professor Mueller and his team looked at actually the data and the models and understood them, they had to conclude that, and I quote, global warming is real, humans are almost entirely the cause. So let me get this straight. A study funded by a family that has the second largest privately owned company in the United States with revenue upwards of $120 billion dollars created with the sole purpose of trying to discredit the science of climate change ends up confirming everything we already know. Hmm. And not just that, they also said that they didn't trust the data from NASA and NOAA and other institutions. So they started collecting their own data in a project called Berkeley Earth. And after they've done all the research and they put together the data and then they compared it and it was a perfect match. So that's it. I have no patience to 
debate this issue anymore. I have no more patience. The debate is over. If you don't know it, it's either because of willful ignorance or deliberate malice. The first can be corrected with studying. The second, I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to focus on what matters most, which is finding solutions. That's what I planned on saying on that video that I prepared a couple of weeks ago and I was planning on publishing it now, but I can't finish like this. I can't end with these words because the head of the second largest polluter in the world just appointed a climate change denier as head of the Environmental Protection Agency. And they're planning on repealing everything that we've worked for for decades. We can't afford to be fed up. We can't afford to have no patience. We have no other choice and we have to start working very hard and seriously. And I'm just gonna do my part and I hope you do yours. Let's get to work. And thank you for being curious.